If you don't have the right people to build and operate that data center, that's where you end up with problems. We all want our devices to be more responsive and our streaming to be super fast. But what most people don't realize is that the key to maintaining ultra-fast networking speeds is their proximity to a data center. When it comes to networking speed, the closer you are to the source of whatever you're streaming, the less drag or latency you'll experience. That's why data center operators work around the clock to minimize latency and keep high-speed computing working. But if proximity is the thing, why don't you see data centers on every street? I'm Doug Adams, President and CEO of NTT Global Data Centers Americas. Today we're looking at why data center locations matter and how thousands of virtually unseen professionals are working tirelessly to design and build data centers in the best possible locations for customers and society. So someone asked me today what the world would look like without data centers. If you look at the things that we enjoy in society, the streaming video, the AI, it wouldn't be there because all of those technologies are delivered in the cloud and you wouldn't have it if data centers didn't exist. So if I had a crystal ball and I looked forward 10 years at in our industry, I think you'd find our industry is gonna be big and I think that there will be bigger, broader campuses and the larger the facility up to a point, the greater the economies of scale. One of the main reasons why we build in tier one cities and why the data centers are close to each other is an issue called latency. Latency is really the time it takes for information to travel a distance related to the speed of light. Hi, Denise, good to see you. Thank you, Tom. Hi, Vivian. Most data that's transmitted throughout the U.S. is done on optical fiber. And that speed of light is the limiter for how fast that data moves as it goes from place to place. When people are working from home and they're logging into their ERP systems, their company, that packet of data has to transfer from the person's home back to the company and then back again. That latency becomes a very important factor, which is why we have data centers all across the United States. From a site selection criteria basis, there's a lot of things we look at. First thing, of course, we look at is the availability of power, because power is the lifeblood for any data center. Then, of course, we're looking for a very fiber-rich environment. Without fiber, data center is literally an island. That fiber is usually not spread throughout an entire community. Usually there's one place where the fiber all comes into, and what you'll find is data centers are built around that point of presence. Most people don't realize when they swipe that card at that ATM, that information actually travels to at least two different data centers and then comes back. Latency comes into play because you need to make sure that data from a security standpoint matches up and you need to make sure that it happens quickly. Next thing we look at is the municipality. If we do simple things like building screening so you can't see electrical and mechanical infrastructure we have on top of the building, by making sure that we have our generators far enough away from the property lines that they're quiet so we're not noisy because we always want to make sure that we do the right things for the communities that we build in. And then of course we look at the labor pool. People actually operate data centers and they're the most important piece of that. That's the piece that I think most people overlook. When we do our site discoveries, we're looking for local universities. We're looking for hospitals, places that understand mission critical so that we can staff those data centers appropriately. One of the key factors when doing data center selection is the resistance to natural disasters. There's a lot of different natural disasters and as we search out land throughout the globe, we're always looking for the most resistant piece of land. We have very deep analytics that we look at to suss out how disaster resistant a location is, right down to the, the actual geo we're gonna build in. So the size of data centers really depends on the market you're in and where you are in the world. In the US, data centers tend to be much larger than the rest of the world. Places like Latin America, 
Africa, parts of Asia. There just isn't a big presence of data centers. And so it's very important that we as an industry are able to extend our data centers so that we can enable the more advanced services that we're able to enjoy in the developed nations. Unless we all stop streaming media, unless we all stop working from home, you have to have data centers. I think the one thing you'll find is that there will be more compute power using less energy because we operate them in a way that's highly efficient. And as these servers use less energy, that's when you're gonna see AI deployed in a way that we just haven't even dreamed of today. That is where we're heading as an industry.